ক্লাস <laughs> Uh, thank you, Edu, sir, uh, for this warm welcome and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, actually, I'm trying to share uh, the screen, <laughs> but it's not working. Uh, let me try it again. Should I uh, share the entire screen or window, sir? Yes, entire screen, sir. Entire screen. Yeah, it's better. Okay. Okay. So from that, that will be access for all. that is like okay, team but <laughs> okay but this share button is not clicked what's mm -hmm. the problem here but mm -hmm. so do please present now and your entire screen it will work yeah is it visible mm -hmm. i think it's no. coming so you are in the center that's why it might be coming okay what is the problem so oh my god is it okay i think it's working now <laughs> is it sir yes yes it can okay uh you can do slide show also it will be better yes sir. Mm -hmm. uh okay uh, once again good morning uh okay this is the course critical discourse analysis and uh, we are going to have uh, a presentation uh, on a dialectical relational approach to critical discourse analysis and uh, it's me pramod swedi from Uh, Midwestern University, Bagheshwari Multiple Campus, Kohalpur. And uh, I think uh, all other approaches that we have to study under this topic is uh, completed in uh, regular classes. Uh, and what are the approaches we need to study? Our historical approach, multidisciplinary approach, transdisciplinary approach, interdisciplinary approach, feminist approach, Marxist approach, and dialectical relational approach. So uh, today uh, we are going to see uh, or explain what dialectical relational approach is. And this is the overview or outline of my presentation. First, we will uh, introduce Uh, with some terminologies and concepts, what dialectical relational approach means. Then we will see the overview of uh, Fierclaw's uh, model of dialectical relational approach. Then we'll discuss the basic assumptions, then methodology, and we'll talk an application of dialectical relational approach. And at last, there will be conclusion and question answer, uh, or let's say uh, interaction session. So uh, however, you can, uh, ask questions uh, in between as well and you know uh, you have gone through all these approaches can you see the pictures here hello yeah we can see sir yeah yeah we can yes. see yeah and uh, you must have known all the approaches historical approach you studied yes. yeah we have studied this year. multidisciplinary approach interdisciplinary approach transdisciplinary approach marxist approach feminist approach and the last one but not the least that is dialectical relational that we are going to study today uh, can you uh, remind me what historical approach does any of you 
प्लीज हिस्टोरिकल अप्रोच डील्स विदेस अप्रोच टेक्सट एंड उनालिस टेक्सट on the basis of the historical events and uh, the point of the time and in the under the historical approach we must have to know the two uh, major concepts first one is synchronic and the next one is diachronic whereas synchronic deals with the uh, point of the time like uh, if we have to see something special happened in the past at the specific time period like 1920 so that comes under the synchronic and uh, another uh, approach to see inside of the historical approach is the diachronic which deals with the period of time for example if something happens from one period, one time to the another time like from 1920 to 1930 so this is known as the diachronic so uh, how we is, analyze yes. yeah how we analyze yeah. the text in historical approach is we have to see the historical uh, backgrounds and the historical uh, events that how did that arise and how did that uh, work in at, at first how it did it came into the existence so we go through the historical uh, background of the text that uh, there what are the historical backgrounds of that yes. special or topic or point what to say yeah uh, okay thank you and multidisciplinary yeah okay uh, historical approach uh, contextualizes a discourse yes in a particular context or let's say particular time of the history or across the time of the history when you say particular yeah. time of the history it's synchronic and when you say across the time of the history it's diachronic you want to say yes yes sir and multidisciplinary approach to discourse helps you to understand the discourse from multiple disciplines yes yeah Just, multiple uh, subjects for matters, example right? you have yes multiple subject matters for example uh, you have social studies course and there are multiple subjects yes yeah and in order to understand society you need to understand multiple yeah discourses multiple disciplines and interdisciplinary yeah interdisciplinary age these are just this shares the yeah, shares something uh, common yeah something common <laughs> yeah, just like social yeah. yes yeah. and transdisciplinary yeah yeah transdisciplinary is a uh, approaching multiple discipline and making a holistic approach to address social or contemporary problems like uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it goes beyond their existence or it six it, it generates the, another one uh, the common discipline uh, by combining the multiple disciplines we can say yeah that is just like uh, uh, crossing the boundaries or transcending yeah, the, boundaries the boundaries of discipline yeah boundaries yeah. of discipline yes and yeah. studying a discourse uh, not being limited within seemingly related uh, disciplines only yes yeah. and yeah. marxist marxist it's so simple to understand as yes. yeah. uh, what does it do just in two uh, one or two sentences <clears throat> please others also can volunteer please Uh, actually, Marx. Okay, okay. Is it? Great. Uh, actually, I am not being yeah. able to see all the participants. Yeah. I can see only myself. Uh, sorry, uh, the screen. So. Okay, Marxist. L let me uh, tell you one or two sentences on Marxist. It studies the uh, the what we say a uh, class struggle, class struggle in a discourse, or let's say uh, the relationship between the bourgeois class and proletariat class. 
Earth's left to economic in our discourse of tech. And feminist approach uh, helps us to uh, find out the feminist issues in a discourse. Or let's say how female voices are dominated or how females are raising their voices against patriarchal domination. So we can see uh, uh, a discourse from feminist perspectives to see women's issues or females' issues. And here comes dialectical, relational approach. approach and yeah. now, uh, actually, we don't have to take all these approaches as watertight compartments. We don't have to think that they do not share each other. They are related to each other. And here, dialectical relational approach may take the ideas, may adopt the ideas from other disciplines, just like multidisciplinary approach, uh, sorry, other approaches, interdisciplinary as well as transdisciplinary, Marxist or feminist approach too. But the main focus is that, let me uh, introduce the concept now, uh, dialectical. First, let's come to the idea what dialectical is. Dialectical is used to describe situations, theories, and methods which depend on resolving opposing factors. Dialectical, what we call dundatmak in Nepali, yes, and there are opposing factors. There are opposing factors that are uh, visible or that we can find in a discourse. So dialectical describes the situations, theories, methods involving in uh, involving between or among opposing factors. And there is another word that might come time and again uh, in my presentation that is semiosis. And semiosis is any form of activity, conduct or process that involves science, that is it involves science including production of meaning. So it is broader area than linguistics, yes? And you know, semiosis may include all the science systems, all the science systems, gestures, billboard advertisements, uh, media, newspapers, whether verbal or non-verbal, all kinds of science systems uh, will be included under this. And semiosis is viewed here as an element of social process, surely. Uh, all semiotic uh, process, semiosis, are the element of social process. Just for example, pr uh, here we will uh, talk about this approach relating with the problems faced by working class during Corona pandemic these days, so that we can easily understand uh, this approach. And see uh, the semiosis, semiosis and social processes are in dialectical relationship, yes? And you can see so many elements that are in dialectical relationship in a discourse, in so the society or in the society. Let's say the dialectical relationship, dialectical means just opposing relation, yes? Opposite, but they are related, yes? Just for example, during pandemic situation, corona pandemic situations, there is the dialectical relationship between safety and hunger. On the one hand, there is issue of the poor working class people. They are suffering from hunger. They have lost their jobs. And on the other hand, there is uh, the safety issues. There is safety issue and there is lockdown. So these both, uh, these issues come together. And dialectical, so dialectical relation uh, indicates relations between the elements, just like here safety and hunger. They are dialectical. Relations between elements in discourse can be found dialectical. So we take these views. And you know that all these views, all these views or all these perspectives or approaches are just like glasses. You know, glasses, chasma that we put on on our eyes and the uh, the color of the glasses affects what you find in discourse yes it is just like changing just, just like when you um, uh, analyze a discourse from historical perspective you are wearing the glasses of 
historical approach. approach and when you approach. analyze, yes, uh, when you analyze a text from Marxist approach, you are wearing, it means you are wearing the glasses of Marxism. Marxist approach. Yes. Yes, Marxist approach of Marxism. Yes, you are wearing that yeah. glass and you are looking the text from that. And uh, if you wear green glasses, you, you might find uh, other, uh, um, all other things somehow green, more or less. Okay, yeah. it is the same way. So it is the same way. And dialectical relational approach is uh, this approach is developed by Ferkler and uh, Kauliari Raki, uh, 1999, in the transdisciplinary research on social science. That is what I focused uh, earlier. Transdisciplinary research. That means aren't they related? Surely. Their transdisciplinary research and social change help to emerge dialectical relational approach. That means it came from it came from transdisciplinary approach or transdisciplinary way of uh, looking at the discourse. So it seeks to explain dialectical relations relations between semiosis and other social elements. Yes, dialectical relations to clarify how semiosis establishes, reproduces, and changes unequal power relations. And you know that unequal power relations, ideology, or let's say dominations, hegemony, these are the central concepts, central concepts are central themes that critical discourse analysis adopts. And so domination, marginalization, exclusion of some people by others, and in ideological processes, and how in more general terms it bears upon human well-being. That means dialectical relations studies on these issues. And it tries to clarify how a discourse establishes, produces, and changes such power relations. So let me go to uh, overview fair class model dialectical relational approach considers discourse to have some senses some meanings it's like meaning making as an element of so the social process meaning making is element of social process it is not it, it is created meaning is created from a social process within a social process and the language associated with particular field or practices yes that means uh, it considers this approach considers discourse as the language associated with particular field or practice just like political legal or media discourse or we yes you will study uh, political um, applications or, or let's say application of CDA to political discourse legal discourse or media discourse but sometimes they overlap you may not uh, easily distinguish whether it is a political discourse or media discourse sometimes they overlap however we uh, what i mean to say is in this approach discourse is considered to be the language associated with particular field or practice and a way of understanding it considers lang uh, discourse as a way of understanding particular aspect of social world just like discourse of globalization or let's say uh, life in the pandemic situation that we are facing now yes that means it is a way of understanding viewing or let's say developing a perspective to look often the particular aspect of our socio-economic or let's say our life social life so semiosis is the uh, is the view is uh, is viewed as one element of social process and it is dialectically related to other elements of society that means the semiosis uh, or let's say uh, the discourse that is established uh, that, that is uh, created in particular mode is in dialectical relationship with the other elements of society social relations power institutions beliefs and cultural values are in part semiotic they are all come under semiotic but 
we th that means they are in part they share some uh, thing and semiotic or discourse is affected by the social relations power institutions beliefs and cultural values that you all this uh, studied uh, in previous uh, sessions or previous uh, lessons the nature of such relationship differs in terms of time place and institutions see nature of relationships the same thing uh, let's say this uh, let's take the same example the problems of the working class people during corona pandemic see similar kind of pandemic situations situation was experienced by the people in the world earlier as well but the birth the nature of the relationship between such such problems such social problems or let's say so it's problems and uh, the people's life differs in time that means the uh, problem before 100 years before or uh, is not the same that the people are facing this time though the nature though the nature of uh, uh the problem might be the same the problems particular experiences are different place the experiences in america and, and the experiences in nepal are different institutions so uh this approach this approach focuses on how uh, the relationships differ relationships between between what between the social process and other elements of society differ in terms of time, place, and situations. Discourses which originate in certain fields or institutions can be recontextualized in other fields. It can be recontextualized. Discourse can be recontextualized. You know uh, how discourse is recontextualized. Just for example, uh, uh, 30 years back when we see the textbooks or when we see the history when we re, uh, when we read the history of 30 years back we can find the glorification of monarchy we can find uh, that praise uh, praises or glory of the king depicted in the textbooks that people used to study but nowadays nowadays the history is recontextualized you know the history of uh, the unification of nepal and how uh, the newari people in kathmandu some uh, leaders of uh, janjati have recontextualized the discourse of unification campaign yes so uh, discourse can be recontextualized recontextualized uh, in other fields, in other situations. Herkla talks about the dialectical relationship between discursal and non-discursal elements, which implies two things. Yes, there is relation, dialectical relationship between discursals and non-discursal elements. Discursals means that are depicted in discourses, non-discursals that are the elements of social process. Yes, they have relationship. And it implies that that uh, dialectical relation implies two things. When knowledge and understanding of diverse elements of social life benefits from different disciplines. Yes. Knowledge and understanding of diverse elements of social life benefits from different disciplines. That means when we study, when we study uh, corona uh, the problems brought due to the corona pandemic situation, and when we uh, study hunger, see the problems faced by, work, faced by working class people. Hunger, one problem, unemployment problem, health problem, or let's say the problem of uh, their social dignity, humiliation, psychological problems. And when we try to understand these diverse elements, then what disciplines do we borrow from or what disciplines do we benefit from economics sociology 
sometimes culture, psychology, or many others. Yes, and another thing is, is elements of social life are not discrete. Do you know discrete term? Elements of social life are not discrete. Disciplinary boundaries may limit the knowledge and understanding. Yes, it means social life, elements of social life are not discrete. Same example, the problems of working class people during pandemic situation is a social life, for example. And it cannot be discrete. It cannot be isolated from other disciplines, other issues. It uh, just like um, we cannot just explain uh, their um, uh, travel of walking 500 kilometers. That is not discrete. That is related to others, other disciplines, their economic problem, their family problem, psychological problem. They come together. Yes. So. Sorry, why isn't it changed? Okay. And there are three types of analysis in fair class model. One, the textual analysis, where we analyze vocabulary, where we analyze grammar, where we analyze, analyze cohesion and structures. I would like to just, uh, I would like to give you an example of just uh, vocabulary. There is a news uh, article on the problems faced by the working class people during pandemic situations. And when we are having textual analysis, we can see what sorts of words are used for the working class people. Yes, whether the words are appropriate for them or not, whether they ha are described as beggars or human beings with dignity we can see the pick of the words as you might have discussed uh, during feminism while having uh, the vocabulary analysis from the perspective of feminism we can see chairperson uh, the differences between chairperson and chairman yes in the same way we can analyze the vocabulary what sorts of ideology uh, ideologies are uh, depicted or let's say represented it through vocabulary in textual analysis grammar similarly we can see grammar cohesion structure of the text so, and next is discursive analysis where we see analyze force functions coherence intertextuality based on the production distribution and consumption of text that means how the texts are produced just like news are produced social media discourses just like Facebook posts are produced, how they are distributed, how they are consumed or understood by the other audience and by the people involved in the discourse. And there is social analysis where we analyze ideology, power relations, hegemony, resistance, and so on. Yes, mainly these are, and you know that these are the core issues that come under critical discourse analysis. Ideology, power relations, hegemony, and resistance. And this approach is applicable in different fields of social sciences. We can apply it in education, humanities, uh, economics, and so on. So it is transdisciplinary. Again, I would like to go back. What I had said, the boundary lines between the approaches that you have studied up to now are not to be taken as watertight compartments. They are flexible. Rather, they are flexible. They might adopt the ideas from other approaches too. So, say uh, this approach, this approach means dialectical relational approach is transdisciplinary in nature. So, the commonly used analytical categories in this approach are semiosis and other social elements. We anal can analyze these categories discourse, genre, styles orders of discourse and social practices yes what type of discourse is it what are the styles order of discourse yes uh, how the discourse develops yes uh, you can notice all uh, such kind of uh, issues in um, facebook posts these days 
yes order of discourse yes one person or let's say one uh, leader uh, post one kind of post then there comes another in uh, counter post and then another in counter post yes just like that and we can analyze these how the discourse is developed how uh, the knowledge is uh, or let's say how the truth is trying to be established then uh, another category text or social event we analyze this we relate them and they are in dialectical relation you have to notice this too text and social event inter discursivity and inter discursive analysis recontextualization yes recontextualizes uh, contextualizing a discourse uh, in another context and operationalization where we see enactment inculcation and materialization of the discourse these are some uh, commonly used analytical categories in uh, dialectical relational approach and the main important things uh, now we are going to discuss in basic basic assumptions of critical discourse analysis am i audible or uh, am i too fast Hello? no sir it's okay sir yeah Hello. Yeah, okay. carry on, sir. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Please note down if you want to ask some questions. It's because uh, I'm not seeing you. Uh, I'm uh, just seeing my screen, and I can't see your uh, what we say the emotions or reactions. And even yeah. if you raise your hand to ask question, I uh, can't notice it. Uh, yeah, okay. And uh, we will discuss on your uh, questions at the end. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, basic assumptions of critical discourse analysis, uh, sorry, um, dialectical relational approach. This approach analyzes various elements, disciplines, and theories together to establish dialectical relation. We study is in transdisciplinary approach or interdisciplinary approach. You know, transdisciplinary approach came from interdisciplinary approach too. Yes. So, in the same way, um, this approach, dialectical relational approach, came from transdisciplinary. And this approach, this um, dialectical relational approach analyzes various elements, various disciplines and theories together, and it establishes dialectical relationship. The main purpose is to establish dialectical relation. That means they are related, though they are dialectical, yes, or their relationship is dialectical. And aims to address, it aims to address the social wrongs of the day by analyzing their sources and causes, resistance to them and the possibilities of overcoming them. See how sweet this assumption is and we can locate it with the idea, uh, the same theme we are, are discussing now, the problems of the working class people during pandemic situation. This is social wrong, yeah? That is the, uh, that is the people, working class people are facing every day these days and we can analyze to analyze this problem to analyze this issue we have to analyze the sources where the wh what is the source of their source or causes what are the source and sources and causes of their problems and resistance to them how they have resisted just like walking see yes they are opposing the government appeal that they should stay where they are they are opposing and walking resistance they are raising their voices through social media or from uh, so many other ways and the possibilities of overcoming them and further it keeps interest to explain dialectical relation between semiosis and other elements to project how semiosis figures in the establishment again same thing with that, that we discussed establishment reproduction and change of unequal power relations and in ideological relations how the power unequal power relations ideological processes are established how they are reproduced and how they are changed yes so uh, the dialectical social process is the interplay between the between the three labels these text discursive practice and socio-cultural practice. We will uh, discuss on them in application session as well. The three semiotic categories are genre. Yes, what type of uh, genre does the discourse belong to? 
the discourse itself and the style used in the discourse. Yes. Social reality consists of social structure, structure just like uh, the structure, uh, uh, political structures that we have in our society. Uh, hierarchical relationship between the rich class, rich people and low, um, poor class people, working class people. Social structures may refer to uh, the uh, structures um, or hierarchies between the people in terms of their ethnicity, religions, and so on. And practices that are based on such social pro uh, structures and events, practices and events. And social Cultural practice thus meditates, mediates the relationship between social events, fields, and institutions, which are the networks of social practices. So now let's see the methodology. Methodology. This is quite important. Methodology and application. That's how to approach a text how to analyze discourse from dialectical relational approach. And we, at last, uh, there is application session and we will see how this methodology can be applied to analyze a situation, our text, our discourse. Thirkula has presented methodolo methodology for using a dialectical relational version of CDA in transdisciplinary, transdisciplinary social research rather than the method. That means he has developed it as a, uh, methodology rather than as a method and this version of CDA is associated with general method and here the methodology includes some steps, stages stages and under these stages uh, there are some steps also the first stage is focus upon a social wrong in its semantic aspect as we can elaborate this step in two point stages following two stages one select a research topic which relates to or points of a social wrong. Yes, first step. Then second step, construct objects of so research. What sorts of objects should be uh, researched under this research topic? For initially identify research topics by theorizing them in a transdisciplinary way. And we have to theorize the topics, research topics in transdisciplinary way. And number two, what is number one? Focusing upon a social run. Yes, social run. In a semiotic aspect, yes. What is going wrong in the society? What is the problem? First, we have to focus on this. Then, identify the obstacles to addressing the social run. What are the obstacles? To correct the social run, to address the social run. And while doing so, we can fo follow three major steps is analyze dialectical relations between semiosis and other social elements, between orders of discourse and other elements of social practices, between text and other elements of events. And we will see how it can be done uh, with an example. Select text, then what is next step, select text, text either media discourse or social media discourse, even in media discourses, what sorts of media, news, interview, or what else. A focus on categories for their analysis. What cat, uh, categories are you going to focus on? You have to select. And in the light of and appropriate to the constitution of the object of research. But that focus should be appropriate to the object of research and carry out and third step under stage three, Two is carry out analysis of text, both interdiscursive analysis and linguistic semiotic analysis. And, sorry. and number three, consider whether the social order needs the social wrong, whether this stage leads us to consider whether the social wrong in focus is inherent to the social order, whether it can be addressed within it or only by changing it. That means whether we can change that social wrong or not, whether we can correct it or not. If it is a female's issue or let's say domestic violence, can we address it or not? Or if it is the issue of the working class people, can we address it or not? 
And the last stage is identify possible ways past the obstacles. That means how we can tackle with these obstacles, tackle with these social runs. This stage moves the analysis from negative to positive critique. That means how these problems can be fixed. Now there comes uh, application part. And it helps you to understand uh, next uh, lesson also, next unit, uh, let's, not, let's not say unit, 1.3 uh, or 4, uh, 1.4, yes, the topic that is application of CDA, um, yes. Uh, so what was the first step, first stage that we discussed? Focus upon a social run in its semiotic aspect. Step one was select a research topic which relates to or points of a social run. That just like, for example, in the first step, we selected the problems of working class people during corona pandemic. Yes, that is the research topic. Yes. And step two, construct objects of research, topics of research for initially identified research topics by theorizing them in a transdisciplinary way. See. Now, we can construct the objects of research. Working class people are highly affected by Corona crisis. Yes, that is what we believe. That is what we are going to research. On. And what are the objects of research? We can research on unemployment problems. We can research on hunger problems. We can research on health problems they are facing, family problems they are facing, problems of social dignity and psychological problems they are facing and so on there might be many more and now yes now in this second step we constructed the objects of research under the research topic that is problems of working class people during corona pandemic and number and stage two see identify the obstacles to addressing the social wrong what are the obstacles what are the barriers or that means why this social wrong is really uh, does really exist exist in the society and even in this stage there are three steps first step analyze dialectical relation yes because we are under dialectical relational approach we are applying this approach analyze dialectical relations between semiosis and other social elements between orders of discourse and other elements of social practices between text and other elements of it. just like unemployment when you analyze unemployment you will analyze the economic crisis and at the same time you may analyze uh, the uh, attempt of poor people going back home yes and at the same time you can see alternatives yes the the poor working class people are um, facing the unemployment problem they lost their jobs and now they want to go back home and does it bring a, sol a solution or not? What would be the alternatives? You can see, you can see the dialectical relationship between uh, such issues. Just like even under e unemployment, when you are uh, researching on un unemployment issues, you might there might be uh, dialectical uh, elements of events. On the one hand, there is economic crisis. On the other hand. On the other hand, they, uh, the poor working class people go back home, leaving their job sites. Aren't there other alternatives? Uh, hunger, you can see these issues and it is quite interesting as well. Interesting as well as depressing for us. Relief distribution is one solution to address the problem of hunger of the poor uh, working class people. Who do not have sufficient food at their home or who are on the way going back home and there are uh, there is there are some social events re, uh, relief distribution on the other hand just opposite to it some people are doing corruption and just opposite to this other people are raging raging their voices against corruption yes so they are in dialectical relation family problems they are facing family problems. On the one hand, they want to unite with their families with risk. Yes, and the government is asking, 
asking to stay where they are. And they are compelled to a separation for safety, how dialectical they are, social dignity. On the one hand, they are humiliated through media or social media. Relief distribution, there is relief distribution. The so-called uh, politicians or the social workers give them some reliefs, but they, they take the photos and post on social media or they advertise their works and that humiliates the working class people who obtain their beliefs. Yes. So these are some of the uh, dialectical issues. Yes. And uh, you see psychological problems also. Sympathy on the one hand, uh, they get sympathy from others. Yes. Sympathy from some people. At the same time, they are getting criticism for their activities. On the one hand, they get the, just like uh, people who are trying to go back to home, working long way, receive sympathy from some people. At the same time, some people criticize their activities. Oh, they are going to killing. They are going to kill us. They are not. They, uh, they are not uh, paying attention towards government's appeal. So many things. Yes, and life, humanity. On the other, other hand, there is uh, humanity. We can see that support, sympathy, care. And on the other, in humanity, we can see corruption, criticism, humiliation. Yes, they are, uh, yes, uh, they are in dialectical relation. And this stage, in this stage, we need to analyze dialectical relation between semiosis and other social elements that come under a discourse. Yes. And in the same stage, second step is select text. We need to select text and focus on categories for their analysis in the light of and appropriate to the constitution of the object of research. Just like in this step, we can uh, select the news and different media, social media discourses, editorials, interviews, play, press releases, political debates, awareness materials, and so on. And we can focus on some categories for their for their analysis, just like hunger and reliefs. We can focus on that employment loss and alternatives. We can focus on quarantine and family union. We can focus on crimes and punishment. Yes, crimes just like corruption, just like uh, what we say, uh, black marketing. Yes, and punishment. We can focus on humiliation and the dignity of the poor working class people. Yes. So these can be the focus. Uh, this can be the categories that we can focus on during our analysis. And next step under stage two, carry out analysis of text, both interdiscursive analysis and uh, linguistic semantic analysis. And analysis of the text interviews. Uh, here we can analyze selected. Just for example. Uh, I want to select new uh, social media posts and comments, for example. And we can uh, analyze it textually. While analyzing textually, again, the same thing as I said before, vocabulary, grammar, cohesion, and structure. We can anal I can analyze vocabulary. It doesn't mean that I have to, uh, or you have to analyze it in everything, some of them. Yes, you can focus on vocabulary only, or you can focus on grammar and cohesion, or you can focus on grammar, vocabulary, and structure. Yes, what such the words are used for those suffering working class people, whether they are appropriate or not? Yes, textual analysis. Yes, what sorts of language is used for them, whether there is the cohesion in the text or not? Yes, or what sorts of structure is used there? The discursive analysis. Under this, we can see force function, how the uh, how the text functions. The coherence in the text, intertextuality based on the production, distribution and consumption of the text. Yes, just for example, one news on news on uh, uh, the uh, working class people's uh, attempt to cross uh, the borders of Kathmandu Valley. Yes, and reach their home by walking five hundred. Or 600 kilometers. Yes. 
and how this text is developed isn't it related to other texts other uh, similar interdiscursive or uh, interdiscurses that is the discourses recently developed isn't it related to law or let's say the legal documents issued by the government isn't it related to the economic situation isn't it related to the social situations isn't it related to their uh, economic activities that they are going they need to do uh, in their home isn't it related to their religious beliefs many things yes you might see intertextuality and you can see uh, and you, you can uh, see production distribution and consumption of the text who wrote that news who produced this yes whether he is the supporter of the government or opponent of the government or an independent person or uh, and how is it distributed we sharing how the discourse is a text is distributed and who are reading the text how they are interpreting yes we can analyze that and more importantly more importantly in every hello Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are yes, sir. Yeah, okay. yeah. What is the notification? You are no longer presenting. Your screen is, is visible while someone else is presenting. Click here to return to the video call and resume your presentation. What is it? Okay, I'm not understanding this. Okay, I think uh, I need to continue this. Yes, sir. Yeah. And Okay. Are you getting the points? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. It's clear. Yeah. <clears> hey, <throat> okay. uh, what is this? This notification. Oh, okay, somebody. I, yeah, I somebody. Look, look, in, look in the eyes presented his screen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so somebody Lokendra. has mistakenly just uh, attempted that. Please, please. Look at the cancel that. Look at hmm. Okay, okay, it's yes, fine sir. now. Sir. Again, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go on, go on. Okay, okay. So, <clears throat> I was here, yes? And next step. Next step is consider whether the social order needs the social wrong yes and uh, under this stage we can see we can state that corona pandemic has brought large of problem to the working class people however these problems should be and can be addressed whether they can be addressed or not surely they can be addressed and uh, last stage identify possible ways Pass the obstacles. What might be the possible ways to solve these obstacles or problems to solve this social wrong? Social wrong. What is social wrong that we are discussing? Problems of the working class people during Corona pandemic. What can be the possible ways to solve relief distributions to the poor people, working class people, provide employment where they are stuck? Suppose Suppose some people who are coming back to um, Dadeldura from Kathmandu are stuck in Butuwal. And suppose uh, there is uh, a construction project, bridge construction project, and cannot the government pro uh, provide employment there? Surely, where they are stuck, they can be provided employment. That can be alternative. And let them unite with family after checking up their family, taking up their, sorry, health. Yes, after checking up their health, they can unite with their family, provide them sufficient relief as human, not as beggars. Yes, why should people post the photos of relief takers? Isn't it humiliating to them? I think it's better to stop posting the photos of relief takers. They should be behaved as humans, not as beggars. Check the corruptions, black marketing, and punish the offenders and maintain the physical distance bridge of social distance as yes. that means they should not be taken as the carriers the people walking on the streets can, uh, should not be behaved 
only is the carriers of coronavirus. This should be taken as human beings. They might carry, but we should not behave them uh, like that. Ma that means maintain. We should maintain physical distance, but we should breeze up the social distance. And you know that the core of critical distance analysis is to speak on the behalf of who are exploited, who are dominated, who are underprivileged, or who are, yes, who are, we should maintain physical distance, yes. but we should so, freeze up physical distance, and you know that the core of, so now I would like to conclude, this approach to CDA particularly attuned to transdisciplinary research, as we discussed before. It is transdisciplinary because when we discussed on the hunger employment problem, we discussed on economic, we can discuss economic issues. That is the discussion of economic issues. When we talk about humiliation, social dignity, that is psychological issue that we are discussing. When we are talking about the family unions, uh, unions with their family, uh, when we are talking about um, the uh, relief funds, that is that might be social issue. So this is transdisciplinary research, to working with the grains of various bodies of social theories and research. We can adopt Marxist ideas, feminist ideas as well. Yes, and it oscillates between a focus on structures and a focus on strategies of social agents. What are the strategies of social events? What sorts of st structure is uh, focused? It is discussed under this uh, approach. And discourse originated in some particular field or institution may be decontextualized or recontextualized in others. It can be decontextualized either way, as well as recontextualized. This approach adopts methodology than that of methods. OK, this, this is, uh, these are the references. And yes, after this conclusion, these are the references that I used to prepare on this presentation. So this is, yes, now, okay. Uh, this is the time for discussion, okay? And do you have any queries, any questions? We can discuss now. And if you can for the research, email ID, I have provided email ID as well. Yes, please. The sound is not much clear. I think it's better to stop sharing. And come and Okay. So as far we have discussed about uh, dialectical relational approach, and uh, we have already known this as a transdisciplinary in nature yes. hello are you getting me sir yes 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 okay yes, sir. yeah Why so my question yeah my question is uh so does this approach tries to establish synthesis between uh, reality or thesis and contradiction yes that is what uh, we discussed at the last uh, step yes how this problem can be solved. And dialectical always talks about that thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. There is There are some yeah. dialectical yeah. elements in the society, and they have dialectical relations. So integration of thesis, <laughs> antithesis, and there comes synthesis. That is what we call the solution. Yes. Yeah. And another question is, how and uh, how much this approach is best or interrelated with the concept of class struggle, or we just get the notion from the Marxist approach. So yeah. how it is related? Can we say it is as a, a like it's a, the product or it's a, a concept of a Marxist approach? Uh, actually, uh, Marxist approach uh, and this approach have some comments. Because Marxism yeah. is dialectical materialism. You must have studied it in second semester, dialectical materialism. And it is dialectical relational. Dialectical materialism in Marxism, we discussed on only class struggle. Class struggles, dialectical re relation between bourgeois class and proletariat class, proletariat class people. 
Yeah, yes. But here we discuss an, the dialectical relation between other social elements. Other social elements. No, okay, so yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm clear because it's transdisciplinary, that's why it differs yes. from the Marxist approach, right? Yeah. Marxist approach, it made adopt yeah. ideas from feminist approach and other approaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, and other? Other questions, please? And how many of we are here? Uh Student number is only six, sir. Oh. And students are six, and uh, including you and other, sir, we are all together eight. Okay, that's good. And uh, what about other students? I think they have got some electrical, electric. Oh, yeah. Electrical cotton, yeah. Yeah, I am also in my neighbor's house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am <Yeah>. refusing now. <laughs> okay, so now... yes, sir. Okay. Were you asking some questions? No, so it's okay from my side, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. And now I think it's better to uh give some insights. Whatever I have left, uh, I think the user will. Uh, wrap up uh, okay okay thank you sir so uh, all of the things need to be covered are all covered sir thank you Parma, sir, for that one uh, especially that you covered all the parts for dialectal relational approach uh, because they only focus with the two varieties just especially to understand it uh, very easily uh, just connect with two ideas that is text with the context just we have to connect the text with the context in one parameter. Like, uh, for example, there, is, there might be one discourse uh, regarding to American culture. Just, uh, you have to study about American culture, then after, whenever you are analyzing, just you think about your own culture, then you make the analysis. That means what? We need to develop the connectionism of the two ideas. That is, uh, one idea might be inside of the discourse. That is the intra-discourse. Next thing is the inter-discourse. And this inter-discourse is uh, known as towards the part of the societal impacts. That's why Pierre Colo focused on what means uh, the, we need to um, be very much conscious when we're analyzing the text text, context, uh, and uh, the pretext or other facts that has been determined the one. That's why uh, this dialectical relational approach that you defined, that is uh, very much an extended way that, that I found myself. Uh, so I only want to focus here that one, just uh, identify the two variables uh, that might be relevant to relate the concept. Uh, likewise, uh, uh, just you can connect text with the context, like speaker with the listeners, uh, like reader with the writers. This means how we find the concept, how is how something is originated and how something is conceptualized, especially origination and perception. These things are very relevant towards this dialectical relational approach. How subconcept is originated then how that concept is pursued by another. Just it is like later with the concept of the translation, we can think like source concept and the target concept. Mm -hmm. Just like how the source is going towards on that. Like how concept is domesticalized and how concept is foreignized. This is also the end the part also. So foreignization of the concept, domesticization of the concept, uh, likewise, uh, just uh, diverting the original part of the concept towards the Perception part of the concept is uh, the part of this dialectal uh, relational approach. That's why uh, all of the things were covered. Uh, and I would like to thank you, Paramut, sir, for your uh, outstanding performance here on with the students of Central Campus. And we are really uh, thankful with your efforts. And uh, we hope such kinds of collaborations and such kinds of doings in the days coming also. And I would like to inform you here now, one thing more, yes. 
that is uh, i will set you the meeting and send you the link again because this is our platform and we will meet again on 23rd april that means i think 11th by sat yes 23rd april yeah. uh, he, there will be one guest lecture on critical pedagogy in the classroom that is by mohammad woodlin that is he is also the professor in the university at the same university of dr krishna bista yes uh, yeah. and he is giving uh, one hour guest lecture on critical pedagogies uh, in classroom and that is especially cover the second unit like the dr bista cover uh, some points general points in the second unit and similarly that odlin's presentation also be cover for the uh, parts of the second unit that's why all of you i will send you the link and be presented in on 23rd say 23rd means the next day of tomorrow and thursday the one in acha on thursday jai 7 baje exact 7 baje bhane pachi hami chai paune 7 baje tira chai yesma jodi sakau la u chai 7 baje correct aai pugchu bhanya cha haina Okay, sure. उसले एस में आर्टिकल डेवलप कर आर्टिकल तब क्लास रूम में पर्म सर को मेल में हाल दूं लो आर्टिकल के रेफरेंस में रहकर कुरा आर्टिकल डेवलप करा रही है जो क्रिटिकल पेडागोजी पर्स्पेक्टिव में राम कंसेप्ट पार्टी तब से यूनिट लगभग कवर कर thank you very much from my side also especially uh -huh. uh, for this wonderful opportunity in this platform and making me able to connect with uh, the students of central campus of education midwestern university and i hope such cooperation is to come as well and uh -huh. uh, we are doing this and it is i think it is a wonderful job that you have initiated and uh -huh. you have um, broadcast uh, all these things in uh, youtube as well uh -huh. and uh, you are providing materials and you are an exemplary figure for us and uh, we are also trying to i am also trying to uh, follow you, your foot is okay and, thank you thank you sir. Okay thank you. Okay so thank you for today and uh, I think we'll end the meeting for today. Okay yeah, sir thank you sir thank okay. you sir thank you sir. Okay, we'll be coming tomorrow. Okay thank you sir bye.